Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and I'm here at the GTS Distribution Come and Play Day here in Atlanta. I'm not alone, I'm with Richard Drakus yes, from Passport Game Studios. Thanks for coming here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Well, you brought things with you, a thing with you. I did, I, I brought a wonderful game with me. Uh, the game's called Fool's Gold. Right, right here. We'll move this out of the way now, but there's, there's the cover for Fool's Gold. The name kind of gives it away a little bit, but what's the, uh, what's the theme here? It does give it away a little bit. So uh, it is California. It's the gold rush, all right? So this is uh, technically the game begins kind of in an 1848 period. So, so throw yourself back in history. Right. 1848, gold is discovered in California. So it's very thematic of that period of time. The cards in here are thematic. They're, they're the, the treasure that you would actually find in the hills at the time. Right. So... Um, and we'll see some of that, I think, too, as we look at like some of the different actions you can take. Also, you'll yep. see it, I think, in the in the artwork of the game as well as we go along. Absolutely, yeah, it was a lot of effort taken um, on the artist's part to make this feel like you were back during that time period, and I feel like we succeeded at that. And so, are we working together here, or like, what are we against each no, other? No, absolutely, we are absolutely against one okay. another. So we are rival prospecting firms, if you will. Okay. So we represent a company. And the workers, the meeples in this yeah. case, are going to be miners, and they are miners coming to one of our prospective uh, firms, if you okay. will, right? And so, and we're and we're trying to get as much. Each of our respective firms are trying yep. to get as much gold as possible, right? At, at the end of the game, yeah, you want as many points yes. and value as in the treasure of the gems and the gold. Okay, excellent. Do you think we could take a quick look? Maybe do like a little little bit of a playthrough of Absolutely. the games to show show how it works. Yeah, I will mention very quickly. I have a, a screen here. We we all do. We're set up for three players, even though there's two of us. We'll have a dummy player. <laughs> which is not me, it'll be the player we're not using. Good, it's not me either. <laughs> no, that's right, okay, we're in the clear. And, and behind our screens we have, some, we have some money here and we have our workers. And I've got the first player token. Right. So yeah. I guess I'm gonna go first. The cute pickaxe. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's well go to done. the table and see what happens. All right, so there are two phases uh, to each round, All right. There is the prospecting phase and then there is the mining phase. Uh, you are the first player, so in this case, you are the first prospector, right? And okay. you are going to take these die, there are yes. 10. And we're just going to simply cast them and roll these. Now, there, there's a whole bunch of numbers on these. Guys, <laughs> yeah, sure right? there are. <laughs> what do they do? They correspond to the numbers on the board, right? So we look at uh, these twos, for example. Yes. Corresponds with the two. And so what we're going to do is just continue to place these in such a manner until all the die are gone. All right. And what so, is this representing here for us? What's happening? So like, what's this opening up in the game for what, us? So this action represents the available mines for us to mine out of. All right. So. Okay. Um, thematically speaking, right, I mean, we're, we're looking at, uh, well, I want to mine out of the mountains, the forest, river, lake, but sometimes e each one of those locations, we didn't find gold, there wasn't a good opportunity, so that's what the die, the luck of this represents, that okay. at this point in time, I only have four of the five mines available to me. Okay. Okay? Uh, there is a six in the center, what does that mean? The six is, is actually a wild die. Okay. And we'll talk about that action a little bit later sure. on, what, what we do with that. So okay. at this point in time, oops, sorry, didn't place all of them. There's only four mines. So our next choice section w in the prospecting phase would be to begin taking action and placement of our workers. Okay. And we can talk about that. Sure. Well, I, I, I guess I'm first. Yep. Sorry. I, I, I rolled for you, so sorry. That's fine. No, but I, I like rolling. <laughs> and my dice rolling is not so great, <laughs> honestly. Um, I'm going to take the first one. I do know one of the actions I can take. I, I have miners here yep. behind my screen. And so I'm going to take one now. And I'm going to put it out here into one of these mines. I yep. would like to mine up here in the forest, I think. Okay. All right. And I'm going to go in, I can go into any of the available spaces, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you can start at the two if you want, mm -hmm. uh, or you can start Jump up ahead. at the top. Now, those numbers represent a cost to Right. You. Right. I, I would like to advance up the track, because I believe higher up the track I am, potentially the better off. I'm actually going to go here on the four position. All right. So, so it's going to cost me four gold, which I'll then put in front of my screen just to show that I've spent it, right? Absolutely. I don't lose it. It's just like, nope. I'm, here's my budget, and I'm spending some of that budget. I'll get that money back later, right? Yep. So uh, to share with the fo folks at home, uh, every player starts with six gold to begin the game with. Right. All right. Uh, each turn, we will get more gold. We will get one gold piece every turn. That's really not enough. There's another action we'll discuss about how to get more gold, but there's no reason not to spend any money in this game, right? Because you're actually going to get that money back at the end of the right, game. Right, right. Right? So absolutely spend everything you've got. Okay. Uh, don't hold back. Don't be like, oh, there's a bank. I run out of this money. I lose it. Nope. Okay. Freely. Well, I'm going to spend like crazy. <laughs> All right. It's the American system of spending. All right. Well, uh, I've taken my action, so does it go back over to you now? It does. Okay. And, well, in this case, uh, we'll ignore a purple it will player. Ignore purple. Forget him. Purple's doing nothing yeah, he's useful. Worthless. Yeah. So, 
<laughs> so over to you. So there, let's let's take a look at another action that we could take. Okay. All right. So there are basically four actions within this in the, within this turn. You represented one. I am actually going to instead of placing a worker, yep. I am going to place this die. Uh, I could place this wild die here. There are two die here already, so this would cost me two. Okay, gold. so it's not the location you put in the cost there, it's how many dice. It's how many die are oh, already okay, out. Okay. So I mean, I could in fact place that here, and there would be four dice, so then that would cost me three. So it costs more to, and, and the reason that it does that is it actually makes that mine more valuable. Okay. Right? So the more die, the more uh, gold that you're actually gonna be able to mine out of it. We'll talk about that action in the mining sure. phase. Sure. So placing this six where I wanted to put it at the hills is gonna cost me nothing, because there are actually no die already in that location. Right, it's free. Yep, absolutely. And the reason that I want to do this is that by the end of the game, I must have mined from every single one of these locations. Right? Okay. Uh, if I do not, there is a penalty. It's a five-point penalty, and it's a big penalty in this game. So, so now, you, now you've given us all the oppor opportunity, absolutely. essentially, my, to go Davies. My turn is now over, uh, and now it goes back to you. Uh, okay. And then you can take advantage of the opportunity that I just uh, exposed. Right. So I could, I could go and take a, wor a worker, a miner, you, and put you, it into you the hills there. Could. Yep. Or I, I will go, I'm going to do a new action, just so you guys can see one of the other actions that you can take during the game, which is to take a miner from behind my screen, put it in front, and then I can take uh, three coins, That's correct. I believe, three coins yep. back. All right. Now again, this, this money that I spent originally wasn't lost, but it's like it was gone out of my budget. This allows me now to put it behind my screen so I can spend it again, absolutely. essentially, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, and, and money's useful here. It allows me to put more of my workers out in these different locations, so that'll be... That'll be my action. That's the third kind of action. There's a fourth action you can take. Can right. The, four, the fourth action I will show. Uh, now, in this phase of the game, I wouldn't do this. I, I wouldn't do the this. Dum the dummy's going to do this. The dummy's going to do this. The dummy is not a smart player. <laughs> right. Uh, the, so, so the dummy will pass. <laughs> right. So, uh, so the, the, the final action is a pass action. Now, the pass action is, is twofold, right? Uh, if I no longer can spend any money right. or... I, I'm basically done. Yes. So then, okay, I've got whatever workers I have left in here with, you know, let's say all my gold is exposed, I'm done, uh, and I've only got knocking things over. That's, That's wonderful. Right. I've got two workers left. What am I going to do with these guys? Well, there's a cool action, and it's thematic. Um, I get to place these at a mm. mining location. Now, what mining location would I choose? I would choose a location in which I already have a worker. So I'm going to force and pretend sure, like let's I pretend placed we've a done worker that. here. Yep, yep. So what I'm doing here is placing a worker, and this represents essentially a gang. Okay. And uh, because there's, there's a point in the mining phase of this game where we have to check for control. Control usually is given to the player in the front of the mine. Well, right. I don't like that. Uh, so I'm going to add a worker here. I'm going to add a miner. He's my enforcer. Sure. And now there's two of me. I now have control of this gonna mine. You're going to edge me out, right? I'm going to edge you okay. out. So when we okay. go to the mining phase of the game, you don't mine first. I will mine first. Now this guy doesn't get to get anything because I didn't place him. I didn't spend any money. There's He's no not going to help you draw additional Correct. points. He's going to ensure that you get to draw them first. Absolutely. Okay. I get first pick of the litter right. and I'm going to hopefully there's good stuff in there and I'll get the best pieces of the gold. So that's, the, that's what that action represents. Okay. And you do that until you no longer have any workers left behind here. All right. All right. Uh, the other version of passing is simply I'm just done. I've got nothing left to place, right. and then it's like, hey, all your workers are already out anyway. You're right. Done. Okay. And so that what can happen is it's an offset game. So uh, I didn't actually place a worker in my first turn, if you recall. Right. Right. So I actually had more workers to place than you did. So I will actually have an extra turn, if you will, if I have enough money, because that's how the game. That's how the game works. Okay. Right? So, so what, if we assume, and we'll probably skip ahead here, we'll dump some of our figures on the board, mm -hmm. and then we can jump. There's a second phase to the game, right? Absolutely. That's the mining phase of the game. Okay. Well, let's let's we'll jump ahead. We'll set some things on the table here, and we'll do that. Well, we're not in Atlanta anymore. Uh, unfortunately, one of the pieces of footage that we shot for this overview of Pools Gold had some problems, but I want to thank Richard again for joining me and giving me such a good overview of the game that with my own copy here, I should be able to take you through the rest of the overview personally. So let's pick up where we left off and go back to the table. So in the last segment, we had just finished talking about the prospecting phase, and I've set up here what the end of a prospect phase might look like between three players. Now we'll move on to the mining phase, where we will resolve each of these mines in order usually starting with the first one, but in this case, let's skip right to the second because there's a lot more happening here. Now we multiply the number of dice at this location by the number of miners on the track. So we don't count this miner over here. Instead, we have three times two for a total of six, and this is how many cards we'll draw from the deck at that location. As you draw them, you place them face up, one at a time, and most of them will either be 
silt like these that are useless, or cards that we want like gold and gems. And there are two other types of cards that have negative effects like this one called Foul Weather. This reduces the total number of cards that you're meant to draw by one. So now instead of drawing six, we'll only be drawing five. That means one more, and this is a False Alarm, the other negative card. To resolve a False Alarm, first of all, you set aside all of the useless cards that were drawn so far, and then you mix together any good ones along with the False Alarm. And the reason you do this is because now you're going to draw one randomly to throw away. And thankfully, I picked the bad one here, so it's gone, and that means we only have good things remaining. Once the cards have been drawn, there are now three actions that can be taken during this phase. One is collecting from the available gold that was revealed. One option is to collect one of the gold that was revealed. The player who gets to choose first is the one at this location that has the most miners there. If there's a tie, then it's the player who has a miner farthest up the track, which would be blue in this case, except that it's not a tie. Because as you remember, previously Richard put one of his miners here. So with two miners at this location, the yellow player gets to choose first, and they'll collect the one card of gold here, which is worth two gold. The worker who collected the gold should then be taken and put back behind the player's screen. Workers that aren't on the track, like this one here, will not be able to take actions. They just have an influence on the actions, as we saw. Now it's the blue player's turn, and they're the only one left on the track, but there's no gold to collect. The silt and other negative effects that were drawn cannot be used. That means the player can choose one of the other available actions, like taking the worker back, putting it behind their screen, and then collecting two gold from the general supply and putting that behind their screen. This means they've increased the amount of gold that they'll have for future turns. And gold becomes even more important as the game goes on because each player will collect more workers and they'll be fighting over all these spaces, meaning the more expensive ones may be the only ones left available. Another mining action you can take is to winter. Let's pretend we were at the hills location here and the purple player decided to winter. They show this by placing their meeple on its side. Once all of the other actions have been resolved at a mine, then you move on to the winter phase of that location. You then roll the winter die and draw that number of cards from the top of the appropriate deck. In this case, we drew silt and a gem. Once more, the player farthest up the track would get to choose first. There's only one here, so they'll collect the gem, but wintering has a bit of a gambling aspect to it. Because if there had been more workers at this location, let's say all the players had wintering miners there, because on a roll of two, the purple player got very fortunate as there was a gem for them to collect. There was only worthless silt for the yellow player, which they can't take, and with only two cards being drawn, the blue player knew they had no chance of collecting anything at all. We just saw an example of a player collecting a gem, but there are five different types of gems that can be found one different type found in each mine. However, a player cannot collect more than one of each type. At the end of the game, your collection of gems is worth the total value that's shown here based on how many different types that you own. At the end of a round, players advance to the next year, each collecting a new worker as well as one gold each. This represents the new prospectors and investments pouring into the location as gold is being found. At the end of the game, each player sorts the gold they collected into the different mine types that they came from, and this is easy to do because each mine has its own color. The group that you collected that has the most gold, you don't count. It turns out that collection is, as the title of the game suggests, fool's gold. So in this case, the player will not count these five points. The rest of the gold is then totaled up based on the value found in the top left-hand corner. In this case, 11 points. You then subtract five points if you do not have at least one gold nugget collected from every mine. In this case, we don't have any gold nuggets from the mountains, so we're gonna lose five points. And then you add in the score you gained from gems that you collected. As it shows here, for having three of the different gem types, you get a total of six extra points. The player with the most points, wins. I should also mention the inside of the player shields has reminders of the prospecting and mining actions, as well as a complete breakdown of the contents you'll find in each mining deck. Fool's Gold is available. It's for three to five players and takes approximately 45 to 90 minutes, depending on the number of players. I want to thank Richard again for joining me and to the rest of you until the next episode. Thanks for watching.